episode 164, Creating One-on-One Connections in a Digital Age. This Week in Weddings is a support group for wedding industry entrepreneurs. We're the ones behind the scenes planning and designing the event, arranging the flowers, creating the invitations, or taking the photographs for a couple's most important day ever. No pressure. If you've been in the wedding industry for more than a minute, you know it's not all cake and confetti. Running a wedding business is hard, and it's certainly not for the faint of heart. This Week in Weddings is where we catch up on this often crazy but amazing industry and share tips on how to be a better business owner, all while supporting each other along the way. You're listening to This Week in Weddings with Kimberly Rhodes and Annie Roach. Hey guys, I'm Kimberly Rhodes, owner of Hitched Events. And I'm Annie Roach, owner of 5x7 Designs. Welcome back to the podcast. Um, Annie, we have some shout outs to give. I know. I am so happy and so grateful and so thankful for all our Patreon supporters. Yes. Okay. So first, if you don't know, we have started a Patreon account where if you've gotten value out of the podcast, you can support us. As little as 10 cents a day helps us pay for our basically production expenses to keep the podcast going. Um, We've been doing this for three years. It's all come out of pocket. And now we're asking for your help. And some people have already supported us. We're super excited. And we do have a shout out to give to a This Week in Weddings super fan. Super fan. Our first super fan, OG. <laughs> we we should call him it. the OG. He's like he's like the Vicky Gun- Gundelson of This Week in Weddings. There you go. I love it. So um, first, if you are a podcast supporter of our middle tier, which we are calling Better Than a Latte, you get listed on our This Week in Weddings website, which is super fun. So we have people's headshots, links to their companies, which, you know, everyone likes those inbound links. And our super fans get a shout out on the podcast. And our first one goes to, drum roll, Jordan Fothery, who is the wedding sales manager for Rosewood Bahamar. Um, Jordan, thank you for being a This Week in Wedding super fan. We appreciate you. And we will have a This Week in Weddings t-shirt headed your Coming way. your way. Super fun. So <laughs> thank you for that. And again, if you want to support us, you can go to thisweekinweddings.com slash support. That'll take you to our Patreon page and you can make a contribution. But this week, we are talking all about making connections in a digital age. And what's so funny, Annie, is... We're like in this Zoom digital situation right now. We, I mean, I don't know is, about you, but I'm kind of over it. I'm, I'm a little bit in Zoom burnout. Is that a thing? I, I, I feel, think it's a, it's a thing. It's a real thing. I feel like I am. And I guess we, we have both been lucky where we do a lot of our clientele has meetings are in person. So we never, well, I don't, maybe not lucky. Maybe this was a, was a disadvantage for us because we just were not used to this whole remote planning and remote client meetings, which is the new thing, which is hard. It's hard to get that one-on-one connection and feel a person when you're on a screen. I actually have kind of enjoyed it though, to be honest. (laughs) No, no, less of a a commute, I guess, you know, to meetings. (laughs) Yeah. You know, I actually, like, I love being with people in person. You know, I'm a big hugger. So, you know, I, I do... (laughs) Annie is not. Um, I do miss that, obviously, but it has been super efficient. Yeah, it to does, I mean, you can put a positivity to, like, on that, that time to make it. Yeah, you can really knock it out and get things done if you have mm-hmm. a plan. Well, I also feel like I am notorious for just being a like a chit chatter, you know. And mm-hmm. I think that's part of like building a relationship with my clients is that I'm like getting to know them. That is super important, but. I have not been as efficient with my time because I feel like I spend a lot of time, which is a lot easier to do when you're in person of Mm -hmm. just like hanging out and chatting and all of that. When you're on a call, yeah, you're not really just a phone call or a Zoom call. It's like okay, Okay, you can you can wrap it up a lot easier than in person. Yeah, yeah. So I do feel like I've been much more efficient. That's good. In that, yeah, yeah. Um. But I am interested to hear from our guest about just, you know, b- ways to better connect when you're not in person, like when you're not in front of somebody. 
Yeah, that's hard. I mean, it, it's definitely a learning curve and it's been a learning curve, uh, you know, for both of us. And who knows, this might be the new normal. Maybe people will think this is more efficient and they'll re be requesting more, more I just did, video conferences. Yeah, I just did a um, floral consultation. It was like the first floral consultation I've done on a Zoom call this last week. And it actually went really well. Like it was bride, mom, me, two people from the floral company. And I mean, it was great. There was like sharing of screens of like, look at these pictures and we talked mm -hmm. through things. It really was very similar to being in person. Yeah. I did I did a, a consultation um, a couple weeks ago and it was, it was different because yeah, sharing their screens, sharing designs. Um, it is hard, especially like when like floral, it's a product and not like getting yeah. to touch it and smell it. That's hard. But if you can kind of create that. But we wouldn't that, have been doing that yeah, in the yeah. first meeting anyway, <laughs> you know? True. Yeah. But it is, it's, it's hard to kind of get that, that, that like magical feeling that people feel when they, when they're touching something or like they're seeing the floral for the first time or they're seeing the paper holding the paper. It's almost like a magical experience. So it's hard. You just have to figure out how to recreate that um, non person. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Well, hopefully, our guest will be able to help us with that. Eddie Zorazian is the visionary behind Eddie Zorazian Lifestyle and Design, a full service event design and production studio based in Los Angeles, California. With over 25 years of experience, Eddie's creativity and passion is evident in every aspect of his work, and his ability to imagine and actualize events is unparalleled. Named as one of the top five international florists by the London Financial Times, Zorazian has built a reputation as a visionary artist, and his work has been celebrated and featured by Martha Stewart, Harper's Bazaar, Grace Ormond, E! News, and Glamour, among others. Now, through guest lectures and classes globally, as well as private workshops in his spectacular LA design studio, Eddie generously shares his extensive business design and floral expertise. I have a feeling he's not doing these guest lectures <laughs> in his studio anymore. Yeah. Well, it'll be interesting to see how he does it. But let's welcome to the show, Eddie Zorazian. Eddie, welcome to the podcast. We're happy to have you here. I'm so happy to be here. This is Eddie Zorazian. <laughs> well, we're happy. So before we dig into the topic at hand, creating one-on-one -on -one connections in this new digital world we're living in, tell us your backstory. How did you get into the wedding industry? So um, I started in Los Angeles about 30 somewhat years ago, like late 80s. Um, that deserves some claps. Yeah, definite, definite golf claps. So you, you were like five years old. Gosh. Thank you. Thank you. I love you for Doing that. It. But I, I wasn't. <laughs> um, uh, I started, uh, I, let me back up a little bit. I've always had this fascination of movie sets and the creation of movies, but I was a very nerdy kid, if I may say. And so I was studying to become a chemist in college. Wow. Oh. And a lot of people don't know that because I'm so um, kind of like over the top and crazy artistically um, that I thought, you know, creating sets was almost like chemistry, right? There's a formula, there's a process. And so is the wedding business, like so is the floral business and so is the event design business. So it kind of like my creative side took over rather than my like, you know, the love side, the logical side of the brain and said, I'm going to go ahead and do this and I'm going to create, um, and you know, a floral balloon business back in the 80s because balloons were so popular. Oh, they're uh, making a comeback. Oh, oh yeah. yeah, big time. Um, and I'm loving that because that, you know, one of the first uh, clients that I had was like the Flamingo Hilton in Las Vegas. Mm. And we did their New Year's Eve parties uh, for years in a row. And then, then we ended up getting Disney and that's how I started. So then I went into the floral business and I did gift baskets and I had like Coca-Cola and Pepsi-Cola and all these amazing like large corporations and then dabbled into flowers. Well, it's and funny, Eddie, that you're saying that you have this like chemistry, like kind of this math mind, which I, I mean, I'm, I was a bit of a math dork too growing up. 
but I use math every day in my business. I mean, in the, in, you know, especially doing, I'm sure with planning with you, Kimberly and doing layouts, you're, you, we use a lot of math in the wedding industry. You do. You don't realize that you do. You More know, than I, I would like to be honest. <laughs> me too. Me too. I agree with you. So that's, yeah. So that's what, you know, and then got into event design and then got into, you know, I'm doing a lot of uh, uh, design projects now. Like I'm just doing like branding and designing a, 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 a Hoka lounge, you know? So there's mm. all this kind of sort of different uh, uh, things that I dabble on. And I just launched um, a bunch box, which is a floral delivery package curated by me directly to your home. Oh, uh, that's cool. Fed, that's fun. Fed, FedEx, um, FedEx next day air. So the first batch, the first collection we did, we did a limited uh, edition with 300 pieces for Mother's Day. And just the social media, uh, I mean, Kim Kardashian just put a swipe up, you know. Oh, uh, cool. So it was a great, it was a great launch. Um, yet we are yet to see what's too early to decide what the numbers look like, whether, you know, um, you know, I'm that, that creative side comes in, Oh, let's, let's, let's launch this and let's do this. And then the mathematical side comes out like the chemistry, like the left side of my brain comes out. It's like, okay, so is the consumer going to buy it for this price point? What is the value that they're getting? Are we giving back to the community and proceeds are going, uh, feeding America. So, um, not only am I brightening up people's home of receiving flowers and then actually making it themselves with a link to my YouTube channel, like how to make those arrangements, how to process them. And so they're getting an experience. Oh, so that's super a, fun. Oh, yeah. So it's not just a box of flowers that you're getting. There's like how to prepare, how to take care, how to hydrate your flowers. And then there's a link that you go on. And then I kind of walk you through like a either. I need, a, a I need this education because I <laughs> always kill like orchids, like my poor orchids. I love orchids because like they'll last like maybe a month and then they die. I kill them. So I have, a, you're, I have you're, a black thumb. You don't have a black thumb. You just don't know the proper way of doing it. So um, there is a YouTube uh, uh, episode that I just recently that did that buying, you know, supermarket kind of like, um, or hardware kind of a grocery store kind of uh, orchid plant and how to take wow. it and kind of redesign it and then how to take care of it. So it's it's a lot, it's a likely video because I didn't edit it. I, it was right after um, the breakout. So I was very careful, the pandemic, um, that I was filming kind of in my home and an unedited version of Eddie just like perfected, right? Like you see the four, five, 10, 15 minute video. And this is like a 19 vi minute video that's not edited. Oh, I like that. I'm going to definitely have to, because if, if we pan the camera to the left, there's totally a dead orchid sitting <laughs> in my guest room right now. So, so let me ask you a question. How long do you think orchids are going to last? Well, in my house, a good maybe two and two to three weeks. <laughs> I was going to say a couple months. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Kimberly, you're correct. You should get a good, like a month and a half to three months out of your orchid, depending on. Oh, your... look at, look at, like Kimberly's oh, look now at showing that. a plush um... orchid. That's probably, she's probably had at her house for like seven years now. I actually got that orchid for my birthday, which was middle of April. And so it's, you know, it's only been a few weeks, but it's living its best life. It right looks now. plush. So you know what you should do? Um, take a, a, a little uh, little spritzer, a bottle spritzer filled with fresh water and kind of spritz it on the blooms, Kimberly. Okay. Um, kind of, but to make sure you don't put it under direct sunlight or direct like um, air conditioning kind of a unit because it'll freeze it out or it'll dry it out. But somewhere where it, it's kind of hydrating a little bit. Nice. Hey, real quick, Eddie, before we tr jump into our topic. Your bunch box, was that something you had always been thinking about? Or is this like a coronavirus pivot situation? I, I'm not going to lie to you. It was in between. It was a conversation that we started with um, uh, the, the vendor um, uh, in uh, December. 
from a from a conference that I was at and happened to meet with them and they were a great fan of my work and we started having a conversation. But the project that I wanted to do was much, much, much bigger than what we started off with Bunchbox. So, um, but then I, I, I saw what was going on on social media, all these ladies cooking and starting to do things. And I was like, this is such a great concept. Like, it's not like it's not done before. Just I wanted to do it a little bit differently and right. create like better blooms that you can't buy everywhere. Like you can't go to a supermarket and buy garden roses. You know, it's very rare. You'll find the Ecuadorian, Colombian variety. So I wanted them to have like that garden rose experience. I wanted them to have the peony experience. I wanted them to have the ranunculus experience. And these are directly from Holland. So um, just being shipped out directly to the consumer um, with the best blooms available, because I think the, the Dutch grow beautiful flowers no matter what, you know, and I'm not saying that, all, all, you know, Japanese grow beautiful flowers, but, and so many others, but the Dutch have it right. That's so. awesome. Well, and how great that those um, flower wholesalers are getting that business when like events aren't happening. And I'm sure so many people have been affected by just the quantity or the need for those kind of flowers. Um, so that's great that they're getting that extra business too. I think it's, um, I think overall it's helping, right? Because then part of the proceeds will go to Feeding America. So I'm giving back. So it's not about me and it's not about the brand. No, it's I'm very Im the impressed that you're doing that. I mean, if I had a, pro you know, part of my proceeds would go to Annie's mortgage uh, right now. <laughs> um, that's my mindset. I mean, it's fair. It's fair. <laughs> but no, I really love that aspect of giving back. Well, so, you have to, whatever you can do, whatever all of us can do, right? There, we, we do them in different levels. It doesn't have to be monetary. Uh, there's so many things that people are doing and they're not charging and they're, you know, you're, they're supporting and guiding people and kind of encouraging them to move forward because we're going through a tough time. Yeah. So speaking of Eddie, before you hopped on, Annie and I were talking about being a little Zoom called out yeah, like we a little were, over the in, zoom call we're in zoom burnout i feel like so but, last, yeah i agree with you <laughs> yeah well, it's funny. i feel like um you know a lot of a lot of these the, i think zoom has gotten a lot of good pr <laughs> True. lately um and they're they're thriving but it is hard i mean uh, like at, eddie we were uh, kimberly and i were talking about in our intro that both of us being dallas based we do we do have a lot of local clientele and you know before um you know COVID 19 we were meeting in person and a majority of our client meetings were in person and switching to more digital meetings has been um a learning process for both of us um it is for me too i'm a huggy kind of huggy kissy <laughs> kind of person that's I like what i said so it for me this disconnect because you know for years we've been talking about like the younger generation communicating kind of via text and how the wedding industry should shift its mind set of how we're communicating with the newer generation. And hence this pandemic has taught us technology is like exactly where it's going, right? Like the communication, the way we're communicating, we're communicating online, we're buying online. There is no human re uh, in interaction. And I'm like, that's not what we want. The world's going to suffer. I can't. That frustrates me, and I just can't go back. I just can't wait to go back to whatever the normal is going to be. You know, I'm okay to take the next steps, but I still want to meet people face to face. I still want to interact with people because in our business, we're about creating happy memories, and you can't do that virtually. I'm sorry. Yeah. No, it is hard because you're creating such a personal experience. It's really hard to create it if you're if you don't know that your that your client is a person. Yeah. Well, and I for me, like when I meet with a client, like a potential client, typically it's like come to my office, I'm going to shake your hand when you first get there, and by the time we're done, we're hugging it out because like now we're friends. I feel like we've spent enough time together even if it's like a 45 minute hour meeting where it's like, okay, I'm now connected into what you're looking for and what this day is about and your family and all of that. It becomes so personal 
that I think that is what is hard about the virtual. And granted, I've had a virtual consultation and mm-hmm. have booked a virtual client, and that's great and all, and I'm so thankful for that. But it is different. It is definitely a well, different and process. Kimberly, you, you and I, we both have studios. We both have offices. And I feel like, especially in my trade, I, Eddie, I do um, custom invitations. And a lot of my competitors don't have the studio experience. So I think a lot of times getting my clients into my studio, that's that's already a pre-qualifier that I am, I'm a legit business. You well, know, I, like, I, yeah, I, it's I, also I, like your home base. Like, welcome right. to my home. Mm-hmm. Like I'm like, I pay taxes. Like I've been here, you know, almost 10 years. Like it, I've owned my business, you know, like I'm legit. I'm not going, you know, I'm not a hobby business. I'm legit. And that's a pre-qualifier for me. And also I think the most important thing is you're walking them through an experience that they're not mm-hmm. going to have with anybody else. So part of the thing is like, there's a whole song and dance that we do. Right. And the whole song and dance that we do is we're, we're interviewing them as much as they're interviewing us. And I believe in the energy of the person that comes into the room, whether it's the bride and groom and the mothers and mother-in-law or a friend or whatever. I, I kind of like, I see the energy between all of them. I see the energy between all of us. And this is how I kind of sort of know how to dictate my meeting. Um, yeah. and, and sometimes they're very cold and they're very not talkative. So I have to take the initiative of asking the questions that I want them to answer and kind of softening them up a little bit because they don't know me, right? Or if they've heard of me or they've seen my work and they're, they're like, most of the time people, like when they first, uh, meet me, they're very hesitant because they don't know my personality. They think I'm very successful. So they think I'm probably an asshole or uh, I'm a very alpha male personality, but I'm also a very gentle human being that connects with people. So for me, it's about um, understanding what they want and then repeating it to them. And then I say, I'm going to dream bigger for you. Then you're, so I say, I dream bigger than you're going to dream for yourself. That's my, that's my biggest, you know, after I connect with them and I know, um, and a lot of people, it's so funny. A lot of people, even, you know, sometimes planners come in here too and with the client and I know it's not their first meeting with the planner, but they come they go, you know, and then I ask the question, like, what kind of a budget are you working with? And they're clueless. Oh, you know, that's weird, you know, and I'm like, um, as a planner, aren't you supposed to already have discussed this before you come into the, well, I feel like sometimes they're, they're wanting to yeah. play that game of like, they know the budget, but they're like, well, can you give me more? But you know, it's like, I'm the kind of person that's like, be upfront with your money. Cause if, if we lay it out on the table, like, I, you know, I'm not, I feel like well, sometimes they get that, like, we're going to take advantage of me. If I tell you the, the true price, you know? Isn't that kind of sort of ridiculous, though? Because that yeah. then you're playing the song and dance the whole time. I feel like let's talk about money. You know, money is not a bad thing to talk about. Money allows me to design grander if I need to. I don't know where you're coming from. I don't know what you're comfortable with. And I don't really care if you have money or not. That does not do anything for me. To yeah. me, it's what are you willing to spend and let me tell you how I'm going to give you the best value for your money. We need to have a transparent conversation. It's very clear for me. And so, um, it, you know, it, the beginning is like, oh, we're now starting to become friends. And then you talk about money. You, you start becoming a little kind of like, oh, I don't need to talk to you. We're not friends anymore. And then at the end of the meeting, we're best friends again. Yeah. Yeah. Now, so, Eddie, were you before doing, you know, before the, the whole pandemic, were you doing a lot of uh, digital calls um, and or have you now um, like moved on to moved on to it or have you always been doing more of digital planning? With you know, we've, we've I would say 10 percent, mm-hmm. you know, uh, it, it's not. Uh, and so now it's more like 10, 90. Well, actually, it's. You know, I still get to, um, you know, there's certain clients that we're a little bit, um, 
I'm in a studio space. I'm not in a retail location. So for me, if a client feels comfortable enough and that they're wearing a mask and they want to have a one-to-one, I'm okay with that. Um, It's for their safety that I'm concerned more about, not mine. Um, So I always tell them I would rather do it um, kind of in a a video conference call uh, rather than face-to-face. But then yeah. again, I have clients of mine that I have, it, they're friends, they're not even clients anymore. So they want to see me, they want to drop by and like, hey, I want to have a drop by the champagne so you can send it out with the flowers. So I can't say no, you know. So like it's, it's looking like as long as you're six feet away. Come yeah, on, I mean, I mean we're, get, we're getting, we're getting, you know, Postmates delivered. I mean, so we're getting FedEx delivered. So I think we st- we need to be cautious. Yeah, but if anybody wants to bring me champagne, come, yeah, as long yeah, as you right. come, come and bring it to me. And Put it on my porch. All, <laughs> and they're doing all these parties now outside the front lawns. I just did one for a client. We did a whole, it was her daughter's 18th birthday party. So she wanted to do uh, a bunch of like uh, florals and balloons uh, so that she, you know, when there was the drive on by friends celebrating, um, you know, that she had the front lawn pretty, you know, because she can't have a party. So there's ways of people changing the mindset for now. Um, but hoping that, you know, whatever normal is going to be soon enough. I think the most important thing is the health issue, right? Like, how are your guests going to feel the most comfortable and safe? Uh, safe when they're coming to an event. That's the biggest issue. You know, whether the flowers become hanging from the ceiling or they're, you know, a bunch of candle offers with candles, that doesn't, people are still going to spend money on decor. Just uh, they're going to be more, uh, there's more important things that they're going to look into like health issues, you know, so safety. So Eddie, a question for you, because I feel like, I think we're on the same page that there's something very personal about like the in-person and the one-on-one and getting to know somebody. Like, do you have any tips for how to translate that, still that one-on-one, creating that connection, but doing it while you're on a Zoom call? So um, the other day was an interesting Zoom call that I had with a potential bride and groom and um the initial email was like, Hey, can you give me a price on what I'm looking for? Very dry email. And I was like, Oh, we don't do quotes over the email or a phone call. Um, I was like, Hey, would you like to set up a a zoom call? And then the bride got, you know, came back and she said, I'm so sorry. I have a very busy schedule. I can't really, you know, have a zoom call. And I was like, I would prefer if all three of us were on a zoom call because I can see the dynamics I can, he, I, for me, I'm, um, I read people, right? I read their yeah. body language. I see their, their, the way they speak to me, the way they communicate with me. So sometimes that's, that's hard to do over a text message because it's never clear messages. Right. And sometimes even phone calls are not always that great, right? Because it depends on when, if someone's calling you and you were in the middle of something, then you feel annoyed to answer those questions, so the, the you know so you have to be calm and collected when you're getting on a call a call with a client, and uh, um, we got it on the call finally on the Zoom, and we started talking, and they were like, we want to know how much things are, and it was like the first conversation we were having. And I was like, okay, well we want to see other people and we want to compare, and I was like, okay. And I'm like already turned off, right? Yeah. Like, yeah. I'm already like, ah! <laughs> yeah. So I'm like, okay, wait, 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 wait. Let me it's like, how are you going to show them this, ex- give them the experience and show value the experience when all they're talking about is money? Yeah. So I was like, okay, I go, let me explain to you what my process is. I go, usually we would have a face to face conversation in my office. So I can walk you through my design space, what we really do, how we do things. You see the space all kind of done. There's different parts of the the the, the studio. There's the the set where we film YouTube. Then there's the warehouse. Then there's the office. And then there's the loading dog and the refrigerator. So there's a lot of like cool stuff happening here. 
So I like to take them through it because that shows the caliber of what we do and how much invested we've been, we are in our company and why we've been around for such a long time, right? So that kind of automatically, psychologically, visually, it tells you, the client, that they, they're at a place where they can feel comfortable. Like you were talking about your storefront, right? Like that, that studio experience, whether it's storefront mm -hmm. or studio, that studio experience. Now, you can't do that out of your house. You can't right. do that out of your garage. That feels, that feels like... That's not normal. Yeah. You're like, not here's my guest bedroom. Your, here's oh. my dead orchid. Like, <laughs> right. yeah, and, yeah. And, and do you think they're going to, I mean, they're going to give you exactly what you're giving them, right? Like if you're giving them a home experience, they're expecting home mm -hmm. prices. So if you're giving them a studio or professional kind of atmosphere, then they know that they need to be invested in you as well. So they, you might not be, the cheapest in town, but that's not what they're looking for necessarily. And I explained to them, I was like, are you looking for something that's inexpensive or are you letting me guide you based upon what budget you have, what you can get and you can't get or where your focal areas are that we need to concentrate? You know, because they wanted an arch outside and they wanted a different arch inside the, the, the reception. I was like, why are you doing two different things in the in, in the spaces? Because if you're spending a couple thousand dollars on the ceremony, I want to be able to repurpose that and reuse it back into the ballroom or the reception site. So, you know, saying things like that from experience that you're that shows them that you're helping them and guiding them to a better direction rather than saying, Oh, I'm gonna take your money and then suddenly, okay, well. I helped you in, but a couple thousand dollars more you have to pay like two, three weeks before because now the market prices have gone up. Like yeah. I don't play games like that. I'm very straightforward. If there's a certain budget they'd like to hear, adhere to, um, if I can make that happen. And then I kind of walk them through. I'm like, your budget's a little low for the count of guests that you have. And then they say, what is that? And I'm like, well, we figured from based on what our experience over the years are, it, every hundred people, you're supposed to spend between five and seven to eight thousand dollars per hundred people. So by the end of the conversation, they were felt really comfortable. They felt like I, they understood the process that I walked them through, and and then I explained to them. I said, "Listen, you're asking me to quote you on something that I don't know what the market is going to reflect in the flower prices at this point." I can't give you the varieties of flowers I'm going to use because I don't know what growers are going to have. Uh, you know, so there's a lot of variables in our business that I can't, I'm not saying the prices are going to go up. I'm not saying price. I'm still saying you're, I'm still going to adhere to your budget, but I'm going to do it where I'm going to give you the best value. Right. So, because Eddie, let me ask you this because like you are saying like when you typically would meet th with someone like you're showing them like your studio and showing them all of these things so that they understand kind of the caliber of what they're getting are now that you can't do that now that it's a zoom call are you trying to tell people what you normally do like how are you kind of giving them that same feel for i mean i because i'm with you like it's you have a, a song and dance, like a regular oh, yeah. way I've of got doing my, my, things. My pony show, which I could do in my sleep, but it's hard. But the to... pony show is different on yeah, Zoom. I would imagine it's not the same rodeo. You know. <laughs> well, it, it's 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 like how, how can I explain this to you? Yes, it's quite different, um, but I think they need to see the personality come out in that call, right? I think you're true. Are Catholic. you are you putting your personality are you even kind of going more overdrive on your personality i think so i really want people i'm not as very um um i'm always humble but when they come to me i know who they're coming to so i always have this like well la, la, you're coming into the fancy yeah. life of <laughs> and, and all that stuff but i also think that um now it's like hey like we're in this together I'm a, I'm a legitimate business that has been doing this for 30 years. We're in it for the long run. We're not quitting. We're not, you know, we're here to help you. We're here to have you celebrate again, you know? So uh, really, you know, talking you through, because people don't know you. They don't know where you right. come from. They don't know, 
you know, they've heard about you, but hearing about somebody and experiencing somebody are two different things, right? It's like, it's like I've always been a fan of Oprah Winfrey and I've always said, oh my God, the day that I meet her, when I meet her, I want to do something for her. Or I want to do an event for her or whatever. And all of those, all of those dreams I've manifested, you know, and, and actually seeing the persona of that person and then actually getting to meet them and work with them. I was like, oh my God, no wonder she's so like, you know, like not only really wealthy, but just filled with so much fortune, right? She has so much knowledge and she has so much to give. And she's a woman that absorbs with, even though she has a lot of knowledge, she absorbs and then puts that out there, right? So mm-hmm. for me to have met her face to face and talk to her in my eyes, when there's a room filled with 2000 people and she makes you feel special, that's how you connect with people. And then mm-hmm. you need to figure out a way where you can do that with a video conference. You know, you got to, you got to connect. Well, I also feel like one of the advantages of this whole situation is I feel like you can get to know someone on a more personal level easier because it isn't the pony show. Like it's like, I'm in my guest bedroom right now and my dog is laying on the bed sleeping. Like this is my real life. Whereas like when you come to my office, like, yes, that's my life, but it also is like, the pretty side, like, you know, everything is in its place. Then you come in and you, yeah, you see the linen samples, blah, 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 which is great. But it's also like, you're now easily stripping back the cover of that to like, here's me in my guest bedroom and I hate the wall color. Didn't know I hated it till I had to stay in it for six weeks. (laughs) Yeah, that's true. But are you like, Eddie, like once you've done the Zoom call, you've done this video conference, are you how are you maintaining that relationship? Are you doing how, like, are you reaching we're, out? We're, we're doing like more visual communication than ever before, because obviously when they come to the office, it's a different visual, like song and dance. Now it's going kind of more of like, Hey, there's more of a PowerPoint presentation, which I didn't do before until the client had a retainer. Right. So I wasn't getting all my cookies away from the beginning. And now I'm kind of giving you, hey, let me give you some cookies. You dabble on to that. You eat it. See if you like those A cookies. little nibble. Yeah, like you can come back to me. Um, not saying the whole thing and still keeping the proposals very general because there's no, I don't want to promise things, right? I don't want to say, oh, you're going to get a bunch of peonies gathered up in a French garden um, tulip with a blah, 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 blah. Like, I don't want to get that specific. I want to say you're getting all white flowers with touches of greens you know, whatever seasonably available. So I'm broadening up the language a little bit because I don't want to make promises that I can't deliver. I would rather under promise and over deliver at the end of the day, knowing what I'm capable of doing. Um, So, um, you know, visual communication and actually getting on the phone. Like after I had a talk with the bride and groom, I said, listen, I said, if you get three proposals and you want to walk through them over with me, like, if you have questions with me, I'm here to help you. And the the groom said, are you okay to speak to my parents about it too? And I was like, I'm ready to do whatever you need me to do. If you need to go to a higher authority to explain, I'll do that. Because I believe in what I do and I know what I'm doing. It's not like I'm, you know, I, I, I'm just, and I hate to say, like, I'm not working out of my garage, you know? Yeah. Uh, I've invested a lot of time and effort and money into my business, you know, marketing, PR, uh, uh, branding, you know, my partnerships that I had with different companies. Uh, uh, this is how I'm able to sustain. Yes, I'm in the wedding business, but my, my brand does corporate, does social besides, you know, weddings, like does a lot of bar and bat mitzvahs, does a lot of, birthday parties and then I do a lot of corporate work I do a lot of design work so amongst like being kind of dry I'm actually creatively more happy now right because I'm not doing like three four weddings a weekend because I start on Monday and then I have to end it with Sunday on that project and then Monday rolls around I'm thinking that week and then the next week and then I'm also having a conversation with a bride that's like nine months out again so it's giving me a lot of time. I'm communicating, but obviously we have nothing going on. And, and I'm projecting that we're not going to have a normal capacity 
you know, weddings. You know, whether we were having three, four hundred, we might cut down to like two hundred. We might do two day celebrations instead of one. We might be doing a dinner party for some guests and then maybe like a reception cocktail with hors d'oeuvres for the other guests, you know, or cake cutting and champagne with, you know, another hundred people. Who knows, right? Like the, the way we're going to do events is going to be shifting depending on what we're allowed to have, the capacity of people that we're allowed to have. Sure. So Eddie, you're saying one of the changes that you've made is sending, doing more PowerPoint-based design presentations, and you're doing that earlier in the process than you would Correct. prior to this. Correct. Because, you know, you're kind of giving away where your mindset is. Again, no one's going to be able to take it the way you're going to take it, even if you give them a mood board, because you're still the visionary, right? The mood board is just to tell the story so that you two are understanding the, the, um, the communication. I'm also, what I've done in the past is I've worked with clients overseas where I've done the whole, like, designing and the formula and the recipe and... Uh, costing, right, based on what their market value is, and I've actually chewed it and given it to them. And I've actually also did samples, meaning uh, visual samples um, and video uh, recordings, and I've sent it off to the client. So that's not any more different than what I would do now if that was the case of like communicating with clients because at the end of the day, you're walking them through the vision even though I did not even produce that event in um, overseas, I designed the whole event, the linens, the chargers, the, the, the way the chairs look, the lighting. So I was very hands-on in the whole aspect of the design, but I wasn't there to produce it, which was fine for me because that's what the client was paying me for. I feel like vendors who do a lot of destination work and like mostly work with destination clients probably have the easiest transition right Mm -hmm. now because they're used to having to communicate with people who aren't coming to meet with them or aren't even in their time zone, you know? They maybe have met with their client once if they're lucky, twice. Um, And some of them never. And they're only meeting their their client um, at the reveal, at the actual event. So yeah, they do have that advantage compared to all us local... (laughs) Look, you know, with when we're majority doing, you know, local clientele. I I agree. There's, there's, uh, you know, where there's a good comfort to that too, right? Being local, everybody knows you and so forth. And when you're doing international events, it's really hard sometimes because not only there's sometimes language barriers, there's also time difference. So you're constantly working. Um, You know, sometimes people are like on WhatsApp you know, like text messaging their client or, you know, I have a bunch of interviews to do. So I'm kind of always communicating internationally with what's up. And so it's interesting. It's, it's really interesting Uh, for me. I'm always going to adapt because I've gone through a lot of economic, uh, uh, you know, um, market crashes over the years that I've been in business. So for me, this is like, okay, now we have to shift our thinking again and this is a way we have to do things. We need to consolidate certain expenses. We need to stop, you know, doing this and this and this and this, but still not losing the core integrity of still being um, a valuable and luxurious company, um, not only, you know, locally, nationally, or internationally. Like, I never want to dissolve my brand just because of this. I actually think that I'm going to come out of it even more stronger. Um, than before because I my mind shifts all the time. The, the creative side is like, oh, we can do it this way. And then the logical side goes, okay, so the reality is this is what you have to deal with. So how do you move forward? Yeah, yeah. It's hard. I mean, I, you know, I'm on these couple, you know, these wedding industry groups and there's a lot of people that are like obsessing over like, you know, when are we going to open? When is, you know, all these mandates like that. And like, just my answer constantly is like, wh- wh- I mean, yes, you, we might open, but like, we're, 
we're changed forever. And if you, and if you're not going to, your adapt. business is, is not going to adapt and change. If you're just obsessed of how we were and you're not going to, your business is not going to survive in this industry. Absolutely. I agree with you a hundred percent because they're, you're, they're thinking everything is going to go back to normal. Like no. even some brides that I'm talking to, they're thinking they're going to have that crazy 400 people event and everything's going to be back to normal. And I'm like, it's not going to happen people. Like it's not going to happen. Why are you so let's change it up a little bit. Let's think of a different way of doing it. You still can get glamorous and luxurious without having a lot of people or uh, having it at a, at a reception or a hotel. You still can do it in your home. There's ways of doing things. Yeah. yeah. I think people need to, people need to realize that, this is just a wake up call of like how the next decade is going to be played out and what we need to do as business entrepreneurs in order to survive and thrive. Yeah. So Eddie, what do you think, like if you had to give just like a one takeaway tip for like, what should wedding pros be doing right now to be better communicating virtually or like electronically digitally with their clients now that we can't just see them in person and give them a big hug? Um, I think just communicating with them um, often rather than, um, you know, whether it's a text message or a phone call or a Zoom call, whatever, just kind of make them feel that, you know, you're not, besides the communication of visually, I think people need to feel they're in their safe place. And if you're the safe place, if that's the person that they're communicating, whether it's the planner, the designer, the, the, the musician, whatever, however, you know, connection that they have with somebody to make sure that this is going to be okay. It, it really is. And that you're a professional, you're taking every measure to be able to communicate with them and not disappear and stay present with them and communicate whether it's, you know, Regarding budget, regarding design, regarding however you communicate, just communicate. I'm a Virgo, so I like to communicate a lot. For me, when someone ghosts me is when I get the most, um, how can I explain it? I get upset because I'm like, if you're upset at me, you know, just say, hey, dude, you made a mistake. I'm upset at you. Well, those are immature people, people that just, those are people that don't know how to express their feelings. So they just don't. It's, I don't even know if it's about immaturity. I think it's about different people communicate differently, right? They feel like if they say something, they're going to make me upset. And I'm like, I would rather you tell me and I know where you're coming from rather than yeah. trying to figure you out the whole time because that causes- We're big girls. I, we're big boys. We, yeah, we can take we, criticism. We can take uh, rejection. Absolutely. And you know, when you first begin in the business, there's a lot of that, right? With a lot of rejection. A lot of clients don't go with you whatever that is, and just know that you're so good at what you do, you have to own it for them to have that confidence. Instead of you giving in, they have to come into you. That energy still has to be there. You still have to be in command. This is why they're hiring you. Yeah. Well, Eddie, thank you for joining us. Is there anything that we um, skipped about communicating in this digital age that we want to make sure to touch on before we wrap it up? Um, I don't think so. Um, I think uh, I think we covered it all. I mean, if you guys don't know anything about me, there's a I, I do a YouTube channel. I have an online course that I just launched. Um, so there's a lot of things that I'm doing, and there's something else that I'm launching in a month, which is going to be really exciting. Um, and then you know, just just keep in touch with me. Follow me. <laughs> You know, reach out to me. I'm here to support and give advice as well um, because we're all in it together and, and the people that are are staying, remaining positive and doing well and encouraging others are the ones that are going to pivot and um, succeed in the future. So let's make sure we're all doing that. Awesome. Well, we'll link to all of your endeavors. The Bloom Box, am I saying that right? Bloom Box? Bunch box. Bunch box. The bunch, bunch box, box and the YouTube and all the things. We'll connect that on our show notes so people can find you and follow you and 
all of those great things. Ladies, I want to thank you so much for having me. You guys are such a joy. Kimberly, Annie, I wish you continued success and um, to to more growth and, and prosperity to all of us. Oh. Love it, Eddie. Thank you. Thank you. And don't forget, if you've gotten value out of the podcast, including this week's episode, we would love for you to contribute to our Patreon page. Yeah, we really appreciate it. We've got several different levels that are very economical, and they just help us produce quality education and quality episodes just like this one. Exactly. You can go to thisweekinweddings.com slash support. As little as 10 cents a day helps us with our out-of-pocket expenses. Thank you.